In this video, we'll discuss SDT's attach extended data, batch attach extended data, edit extended data, and the Civil 3D properties extended data tab. So again, once you have your models attached to a job or set up to a job and you have ran the update standards so that those models have property sets, the next key part is to then start attaching your property sets to objects. Now, Civil 3D does have a way of auto attaching property sets to objects, and that is with a variable called AEC PSD auto attach. I currently have this set to off because if this is on, our property sets have an applies to tab and every entity that is defined in the property set is then that property set is then attached to those objects as they're created, as you're doing things. And this has been found to slow Civil 3D down at times. So it also, it tends to add more property set data than necessary. And that can also slow down SDT with the using the job data file because you get more entries in there um, that it has to look through and update. So it's recommended to keep this turned off and to use SDT's tools to allow you to help manage attaching property sets to the entities that it's actually needed on. So next we're gonna open up Job Explorer and I'm gonna open up the uh, example, restaurant and the layout. And I'm gonna start attaching some property sets here. You may already be familiar with how to attach property sets to objects, but we'll review for those that don't know. You can select an entity. Here I have a polyline. And then from the properties palette, extended data tab, there's a add property sets button down at the bottom. So if we run this, we get this dialog and it scans the property sets and shows what property sets could be attached to this individual entity. If I hit okay, those property sets are then added to that entity and they show up in this list over here. So that's one by one um, for adding property sets. You can access that same command by using edit extended data. Now you can do a select similar and then run edit extended data and attach property sets that way. The problem here that you could end up doing is if you select too many entity types, <clears throat> you might miss a few um, entities that are shipped with SDT uh, because we do have unique um, property sets that don't attach to all objects such as polyline so, or a parcel. So if you selected a polyline and a parcel and you run this tool, both polyline and parcel cannot be applied to both entity types and so they won't show up in this list. So you'll only see a few um, property sets that you can add on. Um, so you'll be missing some property sets if you use this method. If they're all the same object type, you should be fine. So select similar, run it, and it should work fine for all those entities. They're all gonna get the property set now. Um, you know, and you're selecting all those entities on a given layer. So as long as you're working with one entity type, you're fine. But it's anytime you add multiple entity types or object types in there, you're going to run into issues and missing some property sets added. <clears throat> so what we've done in SDT is provided a way to attach extended data by object type. So we have this attach extended data button that launches a dialog that shows all the supported object types for Civil 3D and all the supported entity types for AutoCAD. At the start, we have the ability to remove property set data att um, attached to objects prior to um, using SDT to attach. And so I'll go ahead and run this because I've already attached some and just show you that process. Just keep in mind that if I've gone through and filled out data on our proper, on our extended data tab, that you will lose that data after it's detached from those objects. That data is, is thrown away and, and gone. So from this list, I'm gonna pick parcel because I know I have that in my drawing. And then I know that I have some trees for block references I might want some data on. And I'm gonna use control or shift select to grab some other entity type or object types. Um, so I have block reference hatch and I have two kinds of 
um, 2D polylines in this file. So go ahead and hit apply and close. And it's telling me, just giving me that warning that there, if there's any data on it, we're going to lose that data. I'm going to go ahead and yes, let's do this. And it's going to go through first and detach any property sets to those through all those entities. And then it's going to scan your property sets in your file, figure out what uh, entity types that it attaches to, and then attach everything to the supportive entities of SDT. And lastly, uh, because we are using formulas and these sister properties, it will sync the sister properties um, for the formulas. Um, as well as .NET properties. We'll get more into what those do in a later video. But um, if we look on a parcel, now we can have you know, the specific object uh, property set data for parcel shows the uh, property set data here and it's synced up with the formulas that are extracting this data. If we look at some of our polylines, you can see they have the, the property sets and the automatic handles populating with data. So that's attach extended data. So now I can save this file and I'm gonna leave it open. Now, if I wanted to run this on a whole set of files, we can come over to batch attach extended data. And you can run this on your entire model or on, on your entire job. So here I've got a number of model files. One of them is open that it can't add anything to. So we're going to bypass that one, click next. And then again, um, I just want to attach to alignments, pipes, um, structures. Let's see if we have some pressure pipes in here. Let's go ahead and attach to those. Maybe I want my profiles to output. And I know I have tin surfaces. Let's do that and I have parcels and maybe I have um, some block references, 3D polylines. Oh, I do have feature lines. And then we'll go ahead and hit apply and close. And now that's what that's going to do is it's going to go through each file and then attach the data to every file uh, or at these entity types within each of those drawings. So this will take a minute to run as it's going through and attaching the data. So it opens it, attaches to all the entities, scans the property sets in there, attaches them, and then saves the file and closes it and moves on to the next one. All right, Ch changes have been saved now and I can close this out. So once you've got property sets added to your entities, and you can see here, I've got some entities. If I select them and show the extended data in the properties palette, you can see I've got some uh, property sets attached to entities already. The next step after that is you wanna start filling out the data. So you can come in here and enter in data here, um, getting some information into the property sets. So I've already gone through and done a few on some light poles. So here I have a light pole created, you know, filled out the created by, the created on, and the space. Um, here I've got a double lens pole that I've named it double lens. Um, I've given it a serial number. And over here I've got another pole that has a different serial number and it's one lens. So back on this pole, I left some blank data in here um, that will use the copy data tool to populate. So the purpose of this is just to help you, you migrate data and not have to enter on every single object. So here again, we've got the one lens, we've got the, the serial number, and this one's missing the lens and the serial number. So if I run the copy data tool, I'm gonna select the source object, and then you have two options. How do you want to apply the data? Do you want to populate all the fields and sync everything, or do you only want to populate blanks? So if you use blanks, it will check the property sets on 
the, the destination object and make sure that it's blank. If it's blank, then it'll sync this data over to this one. So in this case, I'm gonna use blanks and I'll select this light pole and hit enter and it's gonna tell me how many property sets it updated. Now, if I look at this, you can see that the ones that were blank were synced. Now, anything that was blank is gonna be matched over to this one. So it found 57 blank areas, only a couple of them actually updated um, because there was only data on those. But you can see that that did fill in those ones and didn't really change anything on the other. Um, the other uh, option, if we select this double lens and we hit copy, we'll say all, and then I can go around and pick my other double lens and copy data over to that one, and it's gonna copy all the data. Use copy data, we pick our source object, we'll select all, and then I would go around and pick the light poles that I wanna copy data to, hit enter, and now all of those have been updated with that information. So that's the copy data tool and how you can use that to help you uh, in your workflows so that you don't have to fill out every object. Some of this stuff can be copied around and it might be the same information that you need to on every object or uh, a lot of similar objects. And so the copy data tool can might be handy for you uh, to utilize that way. In the next video, we'll discuss the batch sync data, the sync data, and the job data file.